The U.S. Navy's Sea Fighter is unique in the fleet, an experimental platform for testing new concepts ranging from sophisticated electronics to how ships are crewed and even whether or not they're painted. When the Sea Fighter was christened in 2005, it was also the Navy's only multi-hulled vessel. Today, it's helping map the future of another all-aluminum ship, the triple-hulled Independence-class littoral combat ship. We recently toured it and talked with we recently toured the Sea Fighter and talked with the Chief of Naval Research, Rear Admiral Nevin Carr, and Captain Tim Kelly, the Sea Fighter Program Manager at the Office of Naval Research. Take a look. You're aboard the Sea Fighter, uh, the Navy's only uh, R&D-funded test platform. Sea Fighter can go about 50 knots. Uh, she's got two LM2500 uh, gas turbine engines for uh, rapid propulsion. That's about half the power plant in uh, Aegis Cruiser, uh, with about uh, one seventh the tonnage. Ship is a great investment, and we continue to uh, recoup from that investment. We demonstrated several innovative technologies. The ship itself is an innovative catamaran hull uh, with an integrated uh, drive system. This ship has no exterior paint whatsoever. So we've learned what that does. We're trying to save weight. We're trying to make sure we have speed. But what it does is it exposes the aluminum to the elements a lot faster than you normally would see. Uh, even in the crewing concept, we're learning things about uh, economical ways to man the ship uh, and to run the ship, about the potential mix of uh, civilian and uh, uh, commissioned crews. The crew that mans this ship is extraordinarily professional. I've, I've seen them. Uh, in maintenance and I've seen them underway. Uh, 17 people is uh, not a whole lot of people so they're very focused, very highly trained. Uh, most recently we've been doing some uh, support testing for the uh, littoral combat ship program, testing some of the mission modules. There's always a need to experiment with systems and try new technologies that you can't put on a ship that's in commission. We can modify and support a program against specific requirements they would have. For instance, we have a cradle that we can, we have an 11 meter rib on today. We've talked to programs where we would pull our 11 meter rib cradle and we would actually design a custom cradle for whatever vehicle they would want to put on the ship. This ship only exists so that we can help uh, learn things that will help optimize the mission of the ships at sea. It's, it's all about supporting the fleet. It's about supporting the combatant ships and the sailors that are out there doing the hard work. And in that role, I think the ship does a really fine job. Joining us now is Defense News Naval writer Chris Cavus, who visited the ship and uh, joins us to talk a little bit about it. Let's talk, uh, Chris, about the Littoral Combat Ship. I mean, that's the top priority program for the United States Navy. Uh, Navy has decided that it wants to buy both of the variants, the Lockheed Martin ship uh, as well as the all-aluminum uh, in independence. Uh, what is Sea Fighter teaching the Navy about what it's like to live with all-aluminum ships? Well, first, it's not a done deal yet. The Navy's asking Congress for permission to buy both. That's true. So we'll have to see if Congress can, can, can speak to that. But uh, one of those littoral combat ships, you're right, is all-aluminum. And that's, that's a new thing for the Navy. It's also a multi-hull craft. It's a trimaran, the LCS. The Sea Fighter is a, multi, is a, is a catamaran, mm -hmm. two hulls, mm -hmm. but it's still all-aluminum. And it's interesting what happens with aluminum. It doesn't, doesn't hold its shape the same way that a steel ship does. There's so a lot for, more flex in it. There's a lot more flex in it, and there's, there's continual flex in it. So every day as the, as the sun comes up and, and, and the weather heats up, uh, the, the ship expands. It'll change shape. Actually, they, they told me last year when they had it out of water, uh, the, the deck would actually flex four inches, go up and down four inches in the course of the day. And one of the problems is if you're, if, if you're doing a refit, if you're, if you're modifying the ship, and a guy goes up and measures a hole, I want to cut a hole, but I got, he, he measures it, he cuts a piece, he puts something in, then he cuts something else to go and put it in a little bit later, and it doesn't fit. Yeah, because the ship's changed. He's going, I know what I'm doing, how come it doesn't work? Because what time did you do it? What, what is it telling them about not painted ships? I mean, one of the advantages people always say with aluminum is you don't have to paint it. It, well, they're, they're, they're getting some experience with that. It is, it is interesting. There's no paint on the ship. So it looks like, you know, galvanized steel, uh, I mean, uh, galvanized aluminum, like, right. like, like your air conditioning ducts. Right. And the problem is, at, at sea, you've got your continually corrosive element. Right. And over time, that, that eats up the metal. They're, they're learning how fast that is and where the problems are. What are some other ways that this ship is supporting the fleet that goes beyond the LCS program? Well, they, they, they'll, they'll take certain technologies and put them into it. 
in, in the ship for a while and see how it works. So, for example, right now there's a, uh, a certain netting that goes along the side of the flight deck. Right. Well, Navy ships like to be stealthy. They don't want to be seen. Well, the, the netting that we have on our ships today can be seen by radar. It's a very important safety feature, but it's visible on radar. Right. So there's a new sort of enclosed... Uh, box-like netting that's installed on, on Sea Fighter right now. They're, they're testing it out, see if it works, if it's something they want to put in the fleet. And, and as well as test a whole series of other modules and things that will eventually go into the LCS and the other parts of the fleet as well. Right. So the, so the, the uh, day before we were on board, they wrapped up testing a remote mine hunting uh, vehicle right. and, and, and a, uh, an unmanned surface vehicle, right. both of which are, are being considered to be used on the LCS for the mine mission. Chris, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah.